Hey everyone, and welcome back to the deep dive. Yeah. Today we're going deep on carbon markets. Sounds a little dry, maybe. Yeah, maybe, but actually, it's surprisingly relevant to you know all of us and our everyday times. Absolutely, yeah. We'll be looking at how these markets actually work, um, and why everyone's making such a fuss about them right now. Lots of hype. Yeah, and also, you know, what are some of the issues, maybe risks that we should be thinking about. For sure. And of yeah. course, you know, we can't have a deep dive without talking about how blockchain is changing things. Blockchain is everywhere. It really is. Specifically, we'll be focusing on Hedera Hashgraph. To help us break it all down, we've got our expert here. Hey, everyone. Glad to be here. This is a really interesting topic because it combines finance, technology, and, you know, the climate, which is obviously a huge issue. Yeah, definitely. Let's zoom out for a second and talk about this whole ESG boom. Mm. It seems like every company is suddenly, you know, a sustainability champion. Right. What's driving this? And uh, is it all it's cracked up to be? It's more than just a trend. It's uh, really a fundamental shift in, I think, how investors are approaching things. I understand. Like, we're talking trillions of dollars flowing into these funds that are focused on environmental, social, and governance factors. Wow. The reason for this is pretty straightforward. Investors are starting to realize that sustainability is, you know, not just good for the planet, but it's good for the bottom line, too. So it's not just about doing the right thing. It's about making money, too. Exactly. Companies with strong ESG performance are often seen as less risky, you know, more resilient in the long run. They're going to be attracting investors, top talent, and customers who are all, you know, increasingly demanding these sustainable and ethical practices. Yeah, that makes sense. But in this white paper we have here, it points out that there's a big problem with ESG, yeah. the lack of any real standardized reading system. Right. It seems like companies can kind of, you know, cherry pick data and make themselves look a lot greener than they actually are. Yeah. It's a big concern. The current ESG ratings landscape is very fragmented and prone to what we call greenwashing. Right. Without clear and, you know, universally accepted standards, it's really tough for investors and consumers to compare different companies apples to apples. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of that whole thing with Tesla getting booted from that S&P 500 ESG index. Like they were leading the charge in electric vehicles, but they were dinged on other environmental and social stuff makes you wonder, can we trust any of these ESG claims? Right. It's a valid question. And that's exactly why this push for mandatory climate disclosure is gaining so much traction globally. Mm -hmm. The U.S. SEC, for example, is proposing rules that would require companies to publicly report their climate related risks and emissions, you know, in much greater detail. And this transparency could be a real game changer. So it's about holding their feet to the fire and giving investors, you know, better info to base their decisions on. Exactly. But how does all of this tie back into carbon markets? Well, one way that companies can address their emissions is through carbon offsetting. Okay. That's where these carbon markets come in. And they essentially create this mechanism for putting a price on carbon emissions. Okay. There are two main types. Compliance markets, which are regulated, and voluntary markets, where companies are choosing to offset emissions, even if they're not required to. Got it. So in the white paper, it describes the voluntary carbon market as a booming but flawed opportunity. Mm. It sounds like there's a lot of potential, but maybe some red flags, too. Exactly. It's attracting tons of investment. Projections are it'll reach hundreds of billions of dollars in the next few years. But, you know, there are definitely concerns about the quality and the legitimacy of some of these carbon offset projects. Some critics argue that they don't actually represent genuine emissions reductions. Mm -hmm. And you know, they could even have like negative social or environmental consequences. So how can we tell if a carbon offset project is actually making a real difference? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. It's a complex issue. We definitely need more transparency, standardization, and independent verification of these projects. Mm. For sure. The white paper also talks about this problem of double counting. Can you explain what that is and why it's such a big deal? Yeah, so double counting is when the same emissions reduction is claimed multiple times. Mm. So basically, it inflates the impact of these carbon offsetting efforts. Like, mm. imagine a company plants a bunch of trees, right? And then they sell the carbon credits generated from that project to multiple buyers. Oh, I see. Or let's say a government claims emission reductions for a project that's already been used to generate carbon credits, you know, that were sold on this voluntary market. So it creates this false sense of progress. Exactly. And it undermines the whole system. So that's why transparency and traceability are absolutely critical. Yeah. And this is where I think the whole blockchain thing comes into play, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the white paper even suggests 
that Hedera hash graphs specifically could be a game changer. But before we get into Hedera, I do want to bring in something that this Web3 enthusiast and our sources mentioned. He talked about this, like bigger shift that's happening. Something about climate change driving a digital transformation. Hmm. How does that connect to you know what we're talking about here? That's a great point. He's definitely onto something. Climate change is forcing us to rethink, you know, how we do business, how we manage resources, how we track and measure our impact on the world. And this is where these digital technologies like blockchain come in. Okay. They can provide the transparency, the security, and the accountability that we need to address these really complex challenges. So it's not just about you know, using blockchain for these carbon markets, it's about using it to transform these whole systems and entire industries. Exactly. And Hedera, with its unique features and focus on sustainability, you know, it's really well positioned to play a major role in this whole transformation. All right. So let's talk about Hedera then. What makes it different from these other blockchain platforms? Mm -hmm. And why is it so well suited for addressing, you know, these issues in carbon markets specifically. Right. So one of the biggest things that sets Hedera apart is its energy efficiency. Okay. Unlike, say, Bitcoin, which uses that proof of work system that just eats up tons of energy. Right. Hedera uses what's called a proof of stake consensus mechanism. Okay. This basically means it needs way less energy to run. In fact, it's considered carbon negative. Carbon negative? Really? I mean, how is it even possible? Well, it's because Hedera offsets more carbon than it actually creates. Mm. They've teamed up with a third party organization to like figure out their carbon footprint. OK. And they invest in these verified offset projects to basically neutralize their impact. So, you know, not only is the network itself super efficient, they're going above and beyond to reduce those emissions. That's pretty impressive. And I remember that Web3 enthusiast mentioned something about block nodes being like a key part of Hedera's upgrade coming up. Mm -hmm. What exactly are those and why are they important? He's right. Those block nodes are crucial. Think of them as like the backbone of the network. Okay. They're responsible for, you know, processing all those transactions and keeping that distributed ledger accurate and secure. Hedera's upgrade is going to boost the number of these block nodes significantly. So what does it actually mean? Well, it means the network is going to get a whole lot faster and it'll be able to handle way more transactions. Uh -huh. We're talking hundreds of thousands of transactions every second, maybe even millions in the future. Wow, that's crazy. So if we connect this back to that idea of climate change, mm -hmm. kind of pushing this whole digital transformation forward. Right. I mean, those capabilities could be a game changer for all sorts of ESG stuff. Oh, absolutely. Imagine like tracking the entire life cycle of a product from where those raw materials come from to the manufacturing, shipping, how it's used, and then eventually, you know, recycling or disposal. If we could track all of that on a platform like Hedera, you know, secure, transparent, energy efficient, it would completely revolutionize how we look at and manage our environmental impact. So it's like having a digital passport for every product showing its whole environmental journey. Exactly. And it goes even further. Think about things like supply chains. You know, are they sourcing things ethically or tracking the impact of social initiatives? The possibilities are huge. Let's circle back to carbon markets for a sec. How would this actually work, you know, in practice? Okay. So let's imagine, let's say, a reforestation project. Traditionally, trying to verify the impact of something like that and tracking the carbon credits. Right. It's all been done manually, you know, tons of paperwork. Uh -huh. It takes forever, prone to errors. And of course, there's the potential for, well, manipulation. And all that just opens the door to that double counting problem we were talking about earlier. Exactly. But with blockchain technology, each step of the process can be recorded on this, like, permanent, transparent ledger from planting the trees to issuing those carbon credits. It's all out in the open. So no more shady stuff happening behind closed doors. It's all verifiable. Exactly. And that <laughs> makes it way easier to connect buyers and sellers of those carbon credits, yeah. which in turn makes the market more efficient and trustworthy. And that leads us to this idea of tokenization, which that Web3 guy was so excited about. Yeah, tokenization. He made it sound like this magical key to unlock a whole new world. But I got to admit, I'm still not entirely sure what it actually means. Yeah. So tokenization basically means taking a carbon credit and turning it into a digital token. OK. It's all on the blockchain. It's like a digital certificate mm. for each credit. Then these tokens can be easily traded, tracked, and managed. So instead of all that paperwork in middlemen, it's all digital. Exactly. It simplifies everything and reduces the risk of any funny business. 
Got it. And this is where the Hedera token service comes in, yeah, right? Yeah, got it. That's right. exactly what it's designed for, creating and managing these tokens. And it's a big part of this Guardian platform, which lets these projects easily issue and distribute their carbon credits. So it seems like we're moving towards a more like transparent and efficient system overall. But, you know, we've been talking a lot about companies and investors and all that. Yeah. What about just regular people? How can we get involved? And that's where things get really interesting. Remember Trustery, that application by Miko. Yeah, the one from the right paper. Exactly. It gives individuals the ability to, you know, buy, hold, even trade these tokenized carbon credits. Imagine having your own little portfolio of these credits supporting projects that, you know, you actually believe in. So instead of just hoping that a company is actually offsetting my footprint, I can just go directly support these projects myself. Right. That's the beauty of Web3 and tokenization. It creates this direct link between people and these climate action projects. But, and this is something that Web3 guy kind of hinted at, there's even more to it. It ties into this bigger shift towards a, well, a more decentralized and equitable future. Okay. Now you've got me intrigued. Tell me more about this bigger shift and how it connects to all of this. All right. Okay, so a decentralized and equitable future. It sounds, I don't know, kind of radical. Right. What does that even look like when we're talking about you know, sustainability and carbon markets? So it's about shifting power away from these big institutions and giving it back to individuals. Okay. Imagine a world where you had total control over your data. Mm. And that includes data about your carbon footprint. You could see your emissions in real time, like on a dashboard, and see how it connects to, you know, your everyday choices. So instead of just relying on these, like, estimates or averages, I could see exactly what my impact is. Yeah, exactly. Like, I could see how what I eat, how I get around, the stuff I buy, how it all adds up to my carbon footprint. Exactly. And with that information, you could make better choices. Like, maybe you decide to walk or bike instead of drive, or maybe you eat plant-based a couple times a week. The key is giving people the power to make those decisions. Yeah, I like that. But what about those emissions I can't avoid? Right. Well, that's where these decentralized platforms come in. Imagine a platform where you could directly connect with and fund these verified carbon offset projects. Okay. You could search for projects, you know, based on where they are, the type of impact they have, even the communities they're helping. It's about having a more direct connection, cutting yeah. out the middleman. It sounds like a more, like, democratic way to do carbon offsetting. Exactly. But wouldn't that be, like, really hard to manage? Yeah. I mean, who's going to make sure those projects are legit? How do we stop fraud or double counting? <laughs> That's where blockchain comes back in. A decentralized platform built on a secure and transparent blockchain could solve a lot of those problems. Smart contracts could automate that whole verification process, track the money, and make sure everything is above board. So using technology to build a system that's more trustworthy and fair. Exactly. But let's be real. I mean, there are going to be challenges, right? Of course there will be. This is a big change in how we think about data, finance, even how we govern ourselves. Data privacy and security are huge, and we need to figure out how to manage these platforms responsibly. That makes sense. But honestly, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about all of this. It feels like something's really shifting. It seems like climate change, all this new tech, and people wanting more transparency and accountability, it's all coming together to create some real change. Yeah, I agree. And it's happening from the ground up. People are expecting more from companies, from governments, and they're looking for ways to make a difference themselves. So what can our listeners do to get involved? Well, first, stay informed. Learn about blockchain. Check out the projects being built on platforms like Hedera. Join the conversation. And don't be afraid to, you know, push those companies you support to do better. Right. Ask them about their carbon offsetting, their supply chains, how committed they are to ethical sourcing. Exactly. Yeah. We have a lot of power as consumers. By supporting businesses that share our values, we can really push the market in the right direction. I have to say, this deep dive has been a real eye-opener. It's pretty amazing to think about how this technology could help us create a future that's more transparent, equitable, and sustainable. It's definitely an exciting time to be involved in this space. Yeah. And remember, the decisions we make today are going to shape the world of tomorrow. That's a great point. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of carbon markets, tokenization, and all the possibilities of Web3. Until next time, stay curious, keep exploring.